Salvete, tomorrow is Palm Sunday and Holy Week begins. In a sense, it's never been harder to find a traditional Catholic triduum, but in another sense, the resources have never been more available to us to know what we should be praying there and what all the faith of our fathers have been praying for hundreds and hundreds of years. And tonight we'll go through a good number of those resources, either books that you can order and hold in your hand, or else online resources which you can use for preparation and reference. A couple of housekeeping notes. Um, as mentioned in the chat there, uh, please don't draw fire on your priest or parish by naming them if they're doing the pre-55 or if they do the proper prayer for the Jews, unless they're already public about it, unless it's on their website. Um, because we do have enemies around who will want to look into them. Um, this for the Triserio, we will, I don't know why the comment isn't coming up, I'm trying to put a comment up, uh, we will have a look at that. I'm making my own, um, you can, I'm getting distracted already, you can either lay the candles in warm water for 10 minutes or put them in the oven for 5 minutes and then you can bend them into the Triserio, we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, another note is that if you're asking the priest to pray the proper traditional prayer for the Jews, it is okay for the priest to say, look, I'm going to pray everything that's in the Missal in front of me and follow all the rubrics of the Missal in front of me. Whether it's pre-55, I'll do all that. If it's a 62 Missal, I'll do all that. That's what the priest ought to do. We don't want to get into this mixing and matching of different Missals. If someone has the Pope Benedict's prayer for the Jews written in 2008 and brings a piece of paper to the altar for that to be done. I think that's not great in the liturgy. The priest might be better just praying what's in his 62 missal there. Then it wouldn't have the word perfidious. They might ask everyone to genuflect. Best of all, have a hope the priest has a pre-55 missal and do it all properly. In a moment, I'll go through some questions and answers from um, last time that I missed, and then we'll get onto all these resources. But first, I want to show a clip from a song sung by Israeli children that was aired on Israeli state TV a couple of months ago. They say they remember everyone. They mean they remember the Israeli dead, but they don't count the Palestinian dead as worthy of, of any notice. So, you know this note from the American bishops that they will require a pastoral note on anti-Semitism to be placed in worship aids and pew missiles ahead of all Good Friday Passion narratives beginning this year. It's not actually a new idea. It was discussed in January in the Vatican, and a similar statement had come out in the 1990s and 2000s. It might now be a response to the conflict in Gaza, the annihilation of the people there. Um, but I think the bishops are playing into this false narrative by giving the impression that our traditional liturgy causes anti-Semitism that the Good Friday services might provoke people to attack Jews is absurd and it's a lie. And the bishops are internalizing this and spreading it to the faithful. That's what the effect of these notes will be 
if they put them out on Good Friday. It's never true that the Catholic liturgy causes cruelty and violence and injustice. If that happens, if there's some people attacking the Jews, um, like in, in the streets, I'm not talking about Gaza, which, which is Palestinian land, they can defend themselves, then that's not caused by the liturgy. So if you put a note on Good Friday telling people not to be anti-Semitic, what will the effect of that be? For the people who do hate Jews and want to hurt them, it's not going to have any effect. They won't pay attention to this note. For people who love the Jews and have no intention of hurting them or doing injustice, this note is unnecessary completely. But what it will do, I think, is empower all the Karens in the parish and the busybodies who want a signal from the bishops what they can do next. You remember the lockdowns, how keen people were to impose distancing and using disinfectant for touching the Holy Eucharist, screens, masks, pushing people away from the liturgy, closing the churches at Easter. People loved doing that. They're really sick. They don't know the importance of the worship of God, but they just wanted to be on the team doing what the bishops had asked for. And I think that's what the effect of this note about anti-Semitism will be. People will go around looking for it and challenging people when we ought to be taken up with the passion of Christ and thinking of his resurrection, that he died to save all sinners. That's all of us. And the liturgy is good and perfect. This note is a mistake. Those Israeli children singing that song have been brainwashed. For decades, they've been telling Israelis that the world hates you. They want to kill you. And that's why they've had this inhumane overreaction to the October 7th attacks, where there's no proportion, no discrimination of targets. More than 70% of those killed in Gaza, over 30,000 people, are women and children. It's the exact demographics of Gaza anyway, so there's been no attempt to just uh, target Hamas. They're just, like they're singing in the song, annihilate everyone. Everything will be destroyed. So if, if anyone sees this note on Good Friday, maybe take a photo of it, share it later. We can perhaps discuss after Easter. But it, it's a big mistake by the U.S. bishops taking on the false narrative against the church and acting as if our liturgy is something questionable, harmful, dangerous. So I will try to answer a few comments that came up last time. Um, we have this. Um, uh, someone mentioning that they will be standing uh, at Good Friday, and they were doing that last year. We already started this strategy last year. In fact, there's people been doing it longer than me for decades being true to the pre-55. Um, and this person says they will also not be taking communion on Good Friday this year. So that's really getting with the program. And somebody else mentioning what, what a hidden in plain sight horrible joke on Catholics to have them yell, crucify him, crucify him at Mass. That happens in the Good Friday readings of the Passion. Sorry, the Novus Ordo readings of the Passion on Palm Sunday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, and the Friday of Holy Week. We'll come back to that in a second with a certain connection. And then somebody mentioning here that they were growing up at the crossroads of the Old Rite and the Novus Ordo, and they had no formation because the church was trying to institute this Novus Ordo. And now at 65, just learning about uh, her faith. Now, it's never too late to learn. It's a real gift from God that even at 65, one can come to the faith. Um, I'm just seeing more questions come up. Um, I don't know about, I don't think the, the vigil of Pentecost is specifically to do with the Jewish question, apart from just taking down our liturgy. Um, and Pentecost had so many connections with the Easter vigil and bringing down Holy Week, they had to smash that as well, because it was another chance to bless the Easter waters if there had been some catastrophe on the Easter weekend and the priest couldn't bless the oils or the, or the waters that would be, uh, or the Easter waters, that would be a chance to do it also on the Pentecost vigil and to do baptisms as well. Um, that language in that song was Hebrew. Um, it, was a, it was an old Hebrew song, but they, they've regurgitated it and changed the lyrics We'll talk of swastikas and annihilation and Gaza. Um, 
Yeah, and it's terrible to use children like this. And really, the, U the American bishops are playing into that narrative to brainwash the Jews and make them feel paranoid that everyone hates them and wants to hurt them. And of course, with that mindset, that's why they're ready to use the Samson option, which remember Samson bringing down the temple on his own head and all his enemies. That's what Israel thinks about starting a nuclear war uh, in, in the Middle East. They'll just take out everyone if they think that they're going down. Um, and it's to do with this brainwashing. So, And why is the Catholic Church, who has the solution to all this, the proper prayers for their conversion, for their turning to the light and the removal of the veil from their hearts, why are our bishops pretending our liturgy is dangerous and harmful? Um, I'm going to go th skip through your the chat real fast because I want to crack on with the prepared comments. Um, if, if I miss your question and it's really pertinent to the discussion, do bring it up again and I'll see it later. Meanwhile, we have somebody else who's 65 and learning their faith. Really, it's never too late. And if you get one of these Holy Week books that I'm going to show in a second and you go through this year or next year or future years the, and follow the whole Holy Week, including Tenebrae, it so deeply forms your soul. And it sets you up for the whole year and the whole of your life. It's, it's wonderful. Um, someone is saying the Novus Order was foisted on them as a 10-year-old. And as a teenager, they felt embarrassed attending the Novus Order Mass. So did my brothers and I. Um, it, it's just, it's not fit for the proper worship of God. It, it's man turned in on himself. And that's excruciatingly embarrassing. Uh, somebody asked, haven't you been re removed from the priesthood and what authority do you have at this moment? I've been suspended a couple of years ago because I left my order without permission. I wrote to my superiors to say that I'd be leaving because you heard Francis recently saying, again, not to take that vaccine is some kind of suicidal death wish. He's still pushing the vaccine now when we know how much harm it's doing to people and it was never properly tested. Um, so why Francis is pushing that and why the American bishops are acting as if our liturgy causes anti-Semitism, that's why I left my order, because I think the same forces are behind both. And you, you can't really confront that as part of a diocesan structure or an order, because you're going to bring the, the, the fire down on lots of innocent people if you do that, or lots of uh, bystanders and I'm better off being suspended so I can speak freely. He asked what authority I have. Well, every Catholic who's baptized can witness to the faith and every Catholic who's confirmed ought to witness to the faith. It's one of the duties of confirmation that you publicly, you, you were signed with the cross on our forehead to show we're publicly going to put the cross first. Sweating a bit there. Um, as a priest, I'm obeying the penalties on me. I, I'm not advertising an apostolate. I'm not drawing people to mass or the, or the sacraments. I can give last rites if somebody's dying or I could hear the confession if they're dying. Any, any priest can do that, suspended or not. But otherwise, I'm obeying the penalties and that's way, my way of signaling. I realize the church has a hierarchy and I'm not gonna separate from the church, not gonna separate from the hierarchy, but I'm not gonna follow them in their evil program of, of lockdowns, of putting people out of churches for the um, Holy Week in those, those years. Francis pushing medical experiments and money for Big Pharma instead of presenting the faith. You know, if you go off track on your vocation, if you do not do your duties of state, but you choose to do something else, you can't possibly fulfill your duties of state. You, you have to concentrate on them first, put them in the first place. And that Bergoglio is talking so much about the environment um, and m medical things, which aren't even medical, then he can't possibly be doing his proper role. Um, so I hope that answers what authority I have. I have the same authority as every Catholic. Um, and having to a live stream is not part of your uh, ministry as a priest in that I, I don't need a mission from a bishop to do that. Um, I have no apostolate. I'm very clear. I have no apostolate. I don't have a ministry apart from blessing things. And um, if someone happens to be at one of my masses, I'm not going to turn them away. 
somebody else asked, still don't know where to buy all four of your books. Well, there's, they're all on Amazon, or the first four are on Amazon. Um, and the, the last one, if you believe Moses Volume 2, which was banned by Amazon, there's a couple of links to that in this video description and most video descriptions on my channel. It's uh, basically available on Lulu um, and also an audio book. If, if any Google search will bring it up, but the first four are on Amazon. Um, and we have this, I should, I should be looking at your comments. Yeah, just to clarify, um, obviously I say mass every day and pray the divine office every day. That's my first duty as a priest. That's what our formation for a traditional priest is, that the mass and the office come first. And only then can you be pastoral, because if you're not connected with God, you don't have anything to offer to the flock. And if you're not praying the office, I don't know how anyone can have the spirit or the formation in doctrine to teach, um, to, to, to pass on the true faith. So if we're doing the mass and the office, then everything else will flow from that. Um, so, okay, this... Phileas Maria asked, what do you think of the fact that in the 24 hours of the Passion, this is Louisa Picaretta and the Divine Will, it is stated that the Virgin Mary also cried out, crucify him, crucify him. I don't know if I'm wrong in not liking that. You're definitely right in not liking that. It's absolutely abominable to suggest that the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, would shout out, crucify him, crucify him on Good Friday. I I'm not going to go much into the divine will because I'm sick of it, but I will bring up one page here um, from 1926. I'll just see if I can get the camera as well. And you here it says, with Pilate saying, Ecce Homo. Now hear the highlighted part in purple. My sweet Jesus told me, this is apparently Jesus talking to Louisa, my daughter as Pilate said, Ecce Homo, all cried out, crucify him, crucify him. We want him dead. And so did my very celestial father and my inseparable and pierced mother. So this figure that's appearing to Louisa in her imagination or visions is saying to her that God the Father cried, crucify him, crucify him, and wanted Jesus dead. And so did the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is blasphemy against God the Father. Any Catholic theologian knows that it's by God's permissive will that he allowed the crucifixion. But it certainly wasn't God's active intention that he willed Jesus be crucified or that Mary, who's without sin, would cry out such a thing. So it's a disgrace that the divine will says this. And I've seen people saying on Thir a Holy Thursday, they're going to be doing the 24 hours of the Passion, according to this. It will deform your mind and your meditations. Um, it has Jesus and Mary and the angels and saints crucifying Louisa and saying what joy and complacency they have in hurting her, that, that they love to cause her this pain beyond, by some descriptions, beyond what Jesus felt in some of the passages. Um, all this is wrong. Uh, Mary doesn't inflict pain upon us. Um, so... If we get these resources we look at for Holy Week and Tenebrae, that's what's going to form our souls in Holy Week, form us properly. So somebody else asked, can you renounce a consecration made to the divine will? Certainly you can. If you've just done it a couple of times, I'd just ignore it and go back to approved prayers and litanies and pray the, the tr traditional mass or parts of the office and make consecrations to the Sacred Heart of Jesus or the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and this stuff will have no place left in your soul. If you've really got into it very, very deeply, you, you, you might just try and make a more formal renouncing of it. But it, it's not likely. You, you're not going to need an exorcist or, exorcist or anything like that or a ceremony with a priest. It's, not, it's just a turning of your will back to the traditional sources that we have. Um, Last comment, this is in, in that third video, I think, on the divine will, or generally all my videos, is to identify this pattern of an underlying force 
uh, revised messianism or new messianism trying to hack heaven in any way possible but the narrow gate. Th this is true. This is the big thing. It's very much what we hear from the globalists, their agenda for the world. They're going to cause catastrophe to which they have the solution. So we're then all supposed to turn to them and submit to their solution. And anything, any novelty or false religion or new devotion which promises you a kingdom of peace, a worldly utopia, a return to paradise, this is part of the preparation for the Antichrist. If they say there's going to be some chosen group and you can belong to the chosen people through a certain kind of knowledge which the others aren't going to have, this is false. It's not comparable to being baptized by which you truly become one of the chosen people. The thing with baptism, it's truly open to everyone and it's, it's traditional. We know that it's good. But if they're ultimately the, the Talmud um, and the Zohar speaks of souls that come from the divine, and this is the Jews or the chosen people, and souls which come from hell or the devil, and this is everyone else fit for destruction. And all these new programs of a new kingdom with a new chosen one to bring it in, a new messianic age, they fit into that narrative of the, the chosen few, um, and it's, it's not Catholic. Um, Ours is the narrow way. You have to practice the virtues, and there's nothing better that, to help you than the sacraments. And um, anything moving away from that or beyond that or promising something better is false. Um, so, oh, someone saying the SSPX is in schism. That's false. You know, Francis just gave permission for them to. Um, witness a marriage and say the nuptial mass if the bishop in the diocese is in agreement. And I think in 2017 or 16, he said they can hear confessions or those who go to confession to the SSBX priests will be absolved. How can they be in schism if that's the case? Priests in schism are not going to have permission for the sacraments, including mass and confession. So that's false. And it's a shame if mass of ages gave that impression because it's not true. SSPX is not in schism. We're going to move on to the various resources first. Um, well, did you hear Jared Kushner saying recently his expectation for Gaza is simply that the people need to be moved out? And in saying that, he, he, he means either wiped out or pressured so that they go to some third country. And he, he was saying Israel and Egypt neither want these terrorists, Hamas. So you have to remove all the people if that's what it takes to remove Hamas. And even then setting Egyptians against them. He's basically calling for a genocide. Um, and Netanyahu was called for the same as, as the head of the Israeli Defense Force, that the, the Palestinians should be annihilated or, or pushed out. And now there's a famine looming where hundreds of thousands risk either death or permanent damage to their health. So, yeah, it's disgusting and, and the world is doing very little about it because of the banks and the globalists. Um, but Christ, in his humility and his self-sacrifice, is the answer to this. And our participation in the Holy Week ceremonies is the answer to this. Either Christ rules the world, King of Kings, throning on his cross, or we, we will go under to false Christs. That's not going to happen. We have uh, Thaddeus is back. So I'm not to be trusted. I'm defying and committing sacrilege against church authority. Thaddeus, I think you need to... Um, have a talk with a theologian. Um, but you've made your point, that is, you don't have to keep keep making it. So you've made it again here. D tell me the lie. Instead of telling us all that I lie about Louise and her writings, tell, tell us what the lie is. Point to the lie. Um, and if we disagree, we disagree. Let's face it, we disagree. We don't have to tear each other to pieces. Um, Right, it's time to get to these resources, isn't it? 
So let me see if I'm on the right page. First, we will look at uh, an Osjusti publication, The Masses of Holy Week and Tenebrae. Um, so this is from Dr. Peter Kwasniewski's press, Osjusti Press. And we can, you can also get it on Amazon because this is more suitable if you're in the USA, it's $20. But if you're in Australia or Canada or England or elsewhere, you might want to get it off Amazon and you'll save money on the uh, shipping. Um, you can see the hardcover here is quite expensive. I'll show you why. But the paperback is very good, £15 pounds or $20. I ordered it on Wednesday and I got it yesterday on Friday. So if you order this tonight or on Monday, you could still have it for the Triduum. Um, and I think it's the best, the best thing out there. So we'll just look at some pages. This is Tenebrae for Good Friday and it's the Lamentations of Jeremiah. I was going to sing it because it's so beautiful. But if I sing it, I might spoil it. Just if you have this in your head, these tones, you never forget them. And between the way the passion is chanted and the lessons of the first nocturnes of Tenebrae, these lamentations, it, it's just in your head forever. It's beautiful. I could try and sing it. Um, oh, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I shouldn't be really, should I? I'll sing the last line. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, convertre dominum deum tuum. That means Jerusalem, Jerusalem, convert to your God and to your Lord and God. So th they have here the translations. Uh, they said to their mothers, where is the corn and wine? As they fainted away. What do we think of with corn and wine? except the Holy Eucharist, the body and blood of our Lord. This is the true corn and wine. Oh, I'm not being able to select that text very well. And without it, the souls faint away, wounded in the streets of the city. That's the holy city of Jerusalem, which if you don't have the sacraments, then you just have this earthly city, worldly city. Um, and then... Thy prophets have seen false and foolish things for thee, and they have not laid open to thee, open thy iniquity to excite thee to penance, but they have seen for thee false revelations and banishments. This is very relevant to us today, every year. We mustn't fall for false revelations, listening to false prophets, even within the church, clergy who aren't giving us tradition. Um, these lamentations are are beautiful we'll just skip ahead to the passion readings on good friday oh, i was going to say why this hardcover is so expensive because it has these beautiful colored images in it um so you can see why producing the hardcover is expensive but i'll just make the screen larger a second I got the paperback here. It's grayscale within, um, but it's it's beautiful for the, you can see for the Psalms how some of the syllables are in bold type, and towards the end some of them are in italic. And the reason for that, if we go back one page, is so that at the beginning of each Psalm you will get the notation for where to give emphasis or to go up or down some tones. And then throughout, you can chant. If you go to Tenebrae, chant quietly at first if you're not used to it, but you'll be able to pick it up and you can chant very softly, join in. And this is an excellent way. You have all the English, I don't know where, where to point, the English down one side and the Latin here is beautifully laid out, plenty of space. So I'll show you some more advantages of this publication. Um, and I'm afraid I can't see the chat while I'm putting up the PDF. This is from the, the Passion um, on 
Good Friday, and you can see that there are three different voices, J, C, and S. J is for Jesus, and they put his chant in gold. C is for the chronista, who's like the narrator giving the story. So Jesus asks, whom do you seek? And the chronister will say, they answered him. And then you have the S for synagogue, which means the crowd. And it, it's a quite a high pitch that, Jesus Nazarenum. And Jesus' voice is very deep. Quem queritis. And the chronister is in the middle tone. Oh, I have another ancient book to show you. Um, I'll go back to this large screen. Um, these are, let me see, from 1936, the Officio Maioris Hebdomade. That's the office for the Great Week or Holy Week. And in here, you can see when they, with the Passion, it has all the notes. And I'll just try and find where we have here. You can see when Christ speaks, ah, oh, it's the same line. There's the cross, which indicates Christ is chanting, Quem queritis. And then the chronister. Oh, I can't point because the screen's mirrored. Um, Responderun tehi. And these tones will just, you'll be going around your home. Every thought in your head will fit in with these tones. Um, and But this, with all the notation for the Passion, it's only really necessary for the clerics for... Others on Good Friday, it's it suffices to have the the texts just written out without the notes. But I will show you again an advantage of the Ostiusti, the masses of Holy Week, and Tenebrae. If we go to page two ninety, um, oh, it, it was in the. I wanted to show the. Uh, the Martins, one of the, so you can see in Martins they have the psalm tones, which you get here, the tones for the coming psalm, and then also the tones written out for the readings, which is useful, and then also for the responsories, which is more um, elaborate chant. So you get these three very different tones in matins of the psalms, the readings, and the responsories. They're all different, and you'll be in another world by the time you've been there for 20 minutes. It, it takes an hour or an hour and a half to chant all this properly. Um, and then one wonderful aspect of this book is in the Good Friday prayers. You see, this is the Adoration of the Cross, again, with all the tones. Um, and you can see here in the prayer for the Jews, they have very accurate translation. Let us pray also for the perfidious Jews. And here, Almighty and everlasting God, who drivest not away from thy mercy, even the perfidious Jews. Everyone can have forgiveness if they will repent and beg God for his mercy. He's ready to give it. So unless you have questions, I'll try and return to the screen with the comments. Um, unless you have questions, that's this book from Os Justi, Holy Week, The Masters of Holy Week in Tenebrae. Highly recommend it. Um, now I'm just going to look down the questions. Uh, yeah, I didn't get the context for this, but very true. A table is associated with a dinner, an altar for a sacrifice. Um, yeah, everything happened in advance to show us the situation we're in and that we do not lose hope um, because we've seen what happened in the first Holy Week and then nothing should shake us. 
um, although it does from time to time. But that's why we need to get into these Holy Week writings to get back onto our spiritual feet with our Lord helping us up. Um, this is true. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, that's how we should go with our devotions. Keep traditional and then we won't fall for these deceptions. Um, no, you, you can't go to a Seder male or participate in a Seder male or have one in the church. It's an Old Testament thinking that the Messiah is not yet come and this is to foretell his coming. But Jesus the Messiah has already come. So have nothing to do with a Seder male. I know that, again, the U.S. bishops were pushing this in the 90s and after. I, I think they realized that's not a good thing to push forward again. I, hopefully they've backed off um, for good. Someone's asking about the triumph of Our Lady's Immaculate Heart and what's different with the false utopias. That's I might get back to that in the future. Um, but basically, there'll still be sin and poverty in the world and hunger and death, even though in the triumph of Our Lady's heart, we can expect that the church will be fully herself. Everyone who's professing Christian will, will be fully Catholic. Um, and that doesn't exclude the Orthodox. Of course, the Orthodox can be Catholic if they're under the Pope. And that's what Catholic means. They can still be Orthodox or Copts. But the, the, the church will be fearlessly teaching the truth. Um, all the sacraments will be valid. Um, and so there'll be this great spiritual joy and peace in the church, which will benefit the world. But there will, of course, be those in the world who are still opposed to the church. All right, w way too many questions. I'm going to have to catch up with all this later and move on to the next resource. It's this Hebdomada Sancta, uh, produced by Franciscan Mar Marian Friars. Um, I have a copy, in fact, from a couple of years ago. I have a few copies. Um, and I want to go to a couple of pages there. You can see it's lighter than the production from Os Justi. Um, but then the, the text inside is a bit tighter. It is, it's also inexpensive. I'm struggling with the $30. It's w well worth it. Um, I will go back to the larger screen so I can show you inside. You, on here for the Easter Vigil, for the Paschal Candle, you can see that it gives a brief history and then a commentary at the bottom. So it has these helpful background information. Um, for the Readings of the Passion, however, it's, it's a little bit tight. It, it's comfortable enough. Um, but you can see it's in the Ostiusti production, it's much more spread out. You can see the different voices. But then this has the advantage of being a lighter book. And it also contains very traditional devotions, like the Stations of the Cross. These, according to the method of St. Francis of Assisi, I mean, it's produced by... Franciscan monks. And I just want to draw attention to a couple of lines from the ninth station when Jesus falls for the third time. Can you read there halfway through the first paragraph? And how enormous must my sins be to cause Jesus to fall so painfully? Had not Jesus taken my sins upon himself, they would have plunged me into the abyss of hell. And then we thank our most merciful Jesus and we return him a thousand thanks for not permitting me to die in my sins. Now, some people say on Good Friday that it's the Jews' fault that Jesus was crucified and they just pick out the Jews. Well, of course, all of us have crucified Jesus with our sins. All of us, apart from the Blessed Virgin Mary and maybe St. Joseph and St. John the Baptist, who no mortal sins there, perhaps no venial sin. They, they had original sin, although St. John was sanctified of that before he was born. Our Lady, no sin whatsoever. The rest of us, we've sinned. And that's the reason for Jesus' crucifixion. The Jews had a leading role in calling for his crucifixion. 
but the Romans went along with it. And that's the situation we have in the world now, where Judaism doesn't repent the crucifixion. It approves of it. They recognize Caiaphas as one of their spiritual leaders, of, and they claim a descent from him in their religion. And the world, insofar as they go along with that and don't see the suffering brother on the cross and realize this was wrong, cruel, and injustice, in fact, a blasphemy because it's the son of God. And if they don't repent, then they're following that narrative. The Catholic narrative is this is the son of God, the son of Mary. He died for our sins. And therefore, on Good Friday, our liturgy awakes in us a sorrow and a repentance for our sins. Not not a, a hatred or a wish to harm anyone. I have had people comment, oh, my sins didn't crucify Jesus. I've not done anything to do that. And I don't know what planet they're on. I've only lately realized they're probably not Catholic. They might be Protestant or something. Surely, I hope all the Catholics watching this tell me, is there anyone there who thinks my sins didn't crucify Jesus? Because here we have this from St. Francis saying, how enormous my sins to cause him to fall so painfully. And if he hadn't taken on my sins, I would go to the abyss of hell. So if we say, I haven't sinned, not only do we make God a liar, according to St. John, but then we don't have a redeemer. Because if we haven't sinned, why do we need a redeemer? And this is what our Holy Week liturgy, with please God do the Stations of the Cross on Good Friday, and ideally every Friday in Lent, we realize we, we all need redemption because we all sinned. It, it doesn't cause an antagonism to other groups. We feel a sorrow for the Jews that they don't see this yet, that they've not yet been moved to repent. And for others, for the Protestants, schismatics and heretics who've, who've gone astray from the true church. And for the pagans, the Muslims and atheists who either don't know the gospel or haven't um, accepted it. So any questions on this book in particular, Hebdomada Sancta, or on the Os Justi book, if, if I see them. And again, you know, if you, if you order these on Amazon, you can get a very quick delivery. I don't think you can get it before Monday, although sometimes Amazon does the same day delivery if you're in a city. Um, but if you could order it after this live stream um, and you, you will have it for the middle of next week. So you'll have it for the Triduum, for Holy Thursday and Good Friday and the Easter Vigil. Um, Okay, so the idea that the scenario was set by the Father is permitted by the Father, yes. Um, but we remember it's Roman soldiers who, who are whipping Jesus along the Via Dolorosa to, to get him to carry the cross up Calvary. But it was the Jews who instigated that. So again, they have this leading role. Um, but our concern is mostly our own sin. It's not what did others do to, to cause it or what have others got now as their sins our priority is our own sins how have we cooperated in this or have we fallen silent in the current corruption of the church for any reason um and then that that's the part that interests us our, our own sin so i'll just check down my notes oh yeah w one other thing i should show you in the Hebdomada Sancta book is they also have plenty of beautiful artwork. Here is Satan entering into Judas as he speaks with a member of the Sanhedrin. Um, and you saw in the Stations of the Cross beautiful art. So for Holy Thursday, we have the, the washing of the feet. Um, so basically, I can highly recommend both of these and they'll totally change your experience of Holy Week, especially even if you had a 62 Holy Week, I think it's good to have the pre-55 book for that week, and you, you see how it used to be done, and there's a lot of overlap. You might have to flick a few pages to catch up with where they are because there's less material in the 62. But for the rest of the year, which we'll get to soon, I, you might, if you're normally going to a 62 mass, you might want to have a 62 missile, especially for the calendar. So someone has asked about Abbot Cabral's book. I will come to that right now, in fact. 
um, if I can find the right images. So this, this is Holy Week again, the complete offices of Holy Week in Latin and English by the Abbot Cabral, Benedictine. Um, it's a 1927 edition. I do have some screenshots of it. If I get into the right, it's very complicated, this tech. Uh, so here's the cover. I better get rid of that banner. Um, there's several different versions on the internet. I think there's a 2013 reprint, but I think this is a 2021 reprint, which is um, would be slightly updated. You, that's from the inside. It's telling us it's from Palm Sunday, basically, until which way am I going? Palm Sunday until Easter Sunday. Uh, the very bright screenshot I got offline someone was kind enough to send me photos from inside their copy and here you can see the prayer for the jews and again the translation it has the word perfidious and they don't translate it as faithless but as perfidious so it's communicating the full deal so i the abbot cabral's version for holy week also contains i think commentary and explanation of the ceremonies. So this is another very good purchase we can recommend. Um, if we go back to the Amazon site, you can check out the details yourself or there's not many reviews there. It's $18, so it's not expensive. Although I must say that the other two versions which we showed from Osjusti and from the Franciscan Friars are better set out. There's more space on the page because they've they're been newly formatted. This will be a facsimile copy where they've copied what's on the pages so it's not so easy to read. Now we'll go to missiles for the whole year, but which include the pre-55 um, Holy Week. Should I just check your questions to see if we've had anything on these books so far? Um, um, but th those when is it best to confess in Holy Week I would say try and go before Holy Thursday if you can go on Palm Sunday um, or it, it better today Saturday or else the Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday in Holy Week. The, obviously, the priests are going to be extremely busy on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday. If they have a priest in the confessional, great. You, you can go to confess. Um, you, you could also go any time in Lent. You might want to go two or three times in Lent. Um, but you should confess ideally before the Easter Vigil. If you're going to receive Holy Communion at the Easter Vigil, it's very significant. Holy Communion is part of your Easter duties to receive once a year and the Easter Vigil or the Easter Sunday is the time that's thought for that, although it need not be, um, then it's good to have confessed shortly before. But don't necessarily save it for Holy Thursday or Good Friday. Does, does that make sense? Um, so here's Someone said, yeah, you, you have to pay a fee to get it the same day in a city. But I think for these books we've looked at and for the sake of Holy Week, it's it's worth it. Um, this Yes, Jesus had sympathy for, for others. And he was saying, weep not for me, but weep for your children because it's going to go rough in Jerusalem. Um, and it's good that there were those like Our Lady and St. John and St. Mary Magdalene um, who, who were following Jesus more or less closely and standing more or less closely to the cross. They're obviously with him. So, and these Jewish women showing sympathy for him. That's a beautiful thing. 
But this, this also clashes, I think, with like the divine will devotion. They're so Jesus is kind of pathetic and always crying out and needing Louisa to strengthen and comfort him. That's false. He, he's the redeemer who strengthens us. Even when he's carrying the cross up Calvary, he says, don't weep for me, weep for your children if you're not going to have the faith. Um, so I hope that's an answer. Um, but it, it, I think the significance of those women, especially, it shows that even today, while the church is corrupt and our leadership is corrupt, um, then there are always good elements in the church um, and those who are disposed to enter. Uh, Jesus wept for Jerusalem, yes. He wept for Lazarus. I mean, he took on human nature, so he had the human emotions. But there's nothing weak about him. I think it's appropriate to cry for Lazarus and very appropriate to cry for Jerusalem. Um, now then, we will go on to those missiles for the whole year. Here's the St. Andrew Daily Missile. Um, I think that came from... Is it the Gaspar Lefebvre missile, another Benedictine? But they updated it a bit and they changed it. So I have one here. And again, I think it's very, very good, basically. And you can see, do I need to go to the bigger screen? Is that too small? Basically, on Palm Sunday, they have commentary and explanations of the rites. So that's very useful. The... the I'll go to a bigger screen because that is definitely a bit small. The, the text is very small. So if you're over 45 and your eyes are going, that might be difficult to read. Um, but then again, we have reading glasses if needed. Um, I think this is excellent, basically. Only a tiny, tiny quibble is in the Good Friday Prayer for the Jews. They use the word faithless instead of perfidious. It doesn't actually matter so much what is in the hand missile. After all, what matters is what's in the altar missile. That's where you want the proper prayers and the priest saying the proper prayers. And if your hand missile has a less than ideal translation, you can always get these prayer cards, which are linked below. And there you'll have a translation, which is very much like that you get in the Dom Casper Lefebvre missile or... Uh, the the Osiusti missile. In fact, I should check that to see if there's any difference. Um, so I can I can highly recommend the St. Andrews. There are three others that people often recommend themselves uh, who, who prefer different versions. So I have got here one from Ireland. That's why it says 70 euros, but I'm sure you can order it from different places. It's just that this is from Silverstream Priory who are excellent, um, so I wanted to give them a mention. Otherwise, Corpus Christi Watershed have this PDF to the Lefebvre missile. I think I have, and this is an excerpt from that, and there you can see that it has the proper prayer for the Jews. You can see where the cursor is. Let us pray for the perfidious Jews. Th this might be the base text for the St. Andrew's missile which has just been adjusted a bit. Um, someone might comment on that who knows better than me. But basically, you can get the PDF off the Corpus Christi Watershed website. And if there's any links not in this live stream description below the video, just send us a message and I'll try and post the links. This, on the other hand, is a PDF of the Father Lassance missile. Um, and again, you can see they use the word faithless in the prayer for the Jews, but or let us pray for the unfaithful Jews, which just confuses a bit with the pagans who are faithless because they've not received the faith, whereas the Jews are perfidious because they've gone against the Testament, and Protestants um, are schismatic and heretical because they've gone against the teachings that they once received in baptism. I, I wouldn't base my decision on which missile to buy just on this translation of this prayer. There'll be other things to look at. But the fact that you can get the PDF 
um, online, you can take a good look inside them and that could help you discern which to get. Another missile people have mentioned, although I've not seen one, is this St. Joseph Daily Missile. On this website, they say it's out of print. Um, but you can see the text there is pretty clear. Um, I don't know if I can make this whole image fill the screen. I ought to be able to. There we go. Um, so it is, it is very clear. I think someone mentioned this is also good for children. Um, seems to have everything in English there. They probably don't have it in Latin then if the English is presented like that. So if, if you're content to have one without the Latin, maybe someone can correct me on that. But I wouldn't, wouldn't want it without the Latin. Um, oh, it says it has the common of the mass in Latin and English, but probably then in order to keep the weight of the book down for the other um, readings and whatever the Gospels, they would just have the English. Now we'll move to this excellent website for resources. First, I will go back and check your comments. Um, so has somebody shared a good website? Um, No, this is definitely a good thing to pray for. We should pray for peace in Israel and the return and healing of hostages. Yes, pray for aid to reach the hungry and sick Gazans. Um, well, the hospital's been destroyed, so you've had more than a thousand kids have had limbs amputated, many of them without anesthetic. Um, pray for all the, the innocent, even pray for soldiers, that the soldiers might fight according to morality and not with all the horrific war crimes. So... But at, when we pray for all these things, how do we think that will happen? We can definitely pray for these, but God wants us to go deeper and deeper. And sometimes we ask, why does it seem our prayers are not being answered? In fact, all our prayers are always heard. God hears them and no prayer is wasted. So we always give something better than what you ask for if he doesn't give directly what you ask for. And so the key to all these things is the conversion of people to Jesus Christ. First, among all the nations, and when all the nations have filled up the measure of those God's calling, um, I mean, ev everyone has their chance in that if they don't harden their heart. Then also that the Jews have the veil lifted from their hearts that they see the light of Christ and convert to him. Then you will have peace. Then everything's going to come together. Um, but in, in the meantime, you can pray for these. Of course, we should pray for these points um, but if we're not praying Holy Week properly, if we're not praying Good Friday properly, then I, in a sense, th these prayers can't all be fulfilled. I mean, it, that doesn't mean we shouldn't be asking for it. But the fact that the world is full of corruption and cruelty and sin and rejection of God um, and a globalist project should make us examine what, what do we have to do more in our prayer, and it needs the public liturgy of the church. That's the most powerful prayer there is, more than anyone's private devotion, or more than the private devotions of a million people, is to have the public liturgy of the church all on the same page, that that was given to the apostles and handed down our traditional liturgy. I hope that's an adequate answer there. Um, so, Thank you for all those who are adding in the comments about confession there, giving good advice about confession and saying the truth of it. Um, yet yeah, we just looked at the Os Justi version, that's for Holy Week in Tenebrae, which has Perfidius, and we also looked at the Dom Gaspar Lefebvre, uh, missile is a reprint from 1927, so the text is a bit tight on the page, but that would also say Pervidius, and that is for the whole year. You have that for the whole year, was the first books we looked at are specialist for Holy Week. And it's worth, it's worth having both. Um, thank you for those others who are commenting, giving answers to these questions. Um, in the Lassance Missal, 
the, yes, the Latin says perfidious, but the English has been updated at least and says faithless. Maybe it was changed in the 40s to say faithless, but, but the, the Latin is clear and the word matters. Um, it, this is a bit strange. Uh, the, the FSSP priests are very solid. They're not going to make a mistake here. But if you only have venial sins to confess since your last confession, then you can only confess venial sins. You don't have to ever confess a sin again that's already been confessed and absolved. If it's been validly absolved, it's gone. You don't have to confess it again. So I'm, not that I want to argue with any FSSP priest, but I think there might be a misunderstanding here, um, or else he can contact me and correct me. What's, no, what's annoying sometimes, though, if people are coming to confess every week and they just have venial sins. Now, you might do that if you're a seminarian or a religious a sister or a monk. Yes, it's appropriate to confess each week. For most of the laity, though, once a month is okay, unless you've committed a mortal sin and you want to go immediately. Good. Um, but otherwise, you should be able to just confess venial sins if that's all you've committed. So, and you, you, if you have a mortal sin in your past, then um, that should have been confessed. Only if you if you genuinely forget about it at your confession, and then later you remember, then you're, the confession is still valid, but you have the obligation to confess it the next time you are at confession. Does that make sense? Um, yet the reason that the Liber Usualis will not have the word perfidious is because in 1959, Pope John XXIII took the word perfidious out from that prayer in, from two places, in the bidding and in the collect. And I think the Liber Usualis is 1960. Um, uh, th I mean, it's from earlier than that, but the, the versions that are circulating are normally from 1960 on, and that's why it won't have the word perfidious even in the Latin. The Liber is a wonderful book. If, if you're going to the 62, uh, it's very heavy. <laughs> it's good weight training to um, be in the long ceremony with that. But really, we want the pre-55. Um, this is good. 30% discount on the St. Andrew's Missile from the Sophia Institute Press. So if you're looking for a missile for the whole year, that's a very good one. And there's a, a discount available. Um, I don't know if I've misunderstood this. Um, if someone's committed a mortal sin, they can't receive Holy Communion until they've confessed that and been absolved, right? And they should do their penance. Um, if you have venial sins, you can go to confession if it's already been a month, say, since your last confession. But yes, the, the confitior or any devoutly said prayer in the Mass, even the Our Father, will, will wash away your venial sins. Um, but it, it obviously it depends in part upon the load of them and your attention and devotion at Mass. Um, Okay, now I want to go back to those res online resources for, oh, it's been an hour, hasn't it? These live streams, I interrupt too much and get off track. So we will try and take a look at those other resources. This is pre-1955holyweek.com. Um, if we look here in liturgical resources, and we'll just click on this so you can hear the tone for the gospel. I hope it comes through. Tell me if the volume is working. So this is the gospel. It must be on Palm Sunday because it's the gospel according to St. Matthew. Listen to this beautiful tone here with Dominic. I love it. So after the long chanting of the Passion, you have this special turn at the end for the last of the gospel. Um, and that will be four times. But I encourage you to go to the 
the website and take a look yourself. Um, these are in Latin there if you're in a small church. It's very good if you don't have a deacon or subdeacon or you only have a couple of servers. It gives you the abbreviate, abbreviated Holy Week ceremonies, which if we're going underground, are very, very useful. But it's all Latin, so you have to be pretty up to speed with that. And it's more for the, for the sacristan or the clergy, to be honest. Here's our Triserio, the triple candle uh, picture of it. I think Sarah was asking about that. If you go on the Easter Vigil and you see one of these and you know you're at a pre-55 Mass, here's another way of doing it, although this one's more beautiful. Um, like I said, you can put three long candles in an oven or in warm water for a few minutes and then bend them into shape. They have this beautifully made stand, so it's quite easy to insert them into it. If you twist them together, like I've done the last few years, you need much more skill than I've got and you need five hands to do it. But the final result is good. I'll post some pictures on the community post section after Easter and see what I came up with. But this is more pertinent, perhaps, studies on Holy Week. You can listen to this video, Dr. Kwasniewski. He's talking about what permission is needed to do the pre-55 liturgy and he pretty much shows us this is the highest authority in the church our venerable liturgy it doesn't need permission to do it you just need a priest that realizes this is his calling and a faithful who will support him in saying it and then in withstanding the assaults they might get from the hierarchy for doing that in a lot of cases you know if a priest is going to pray the proper prayer for the Jews or do the pre-55, you don't want to make a song and dance about it. You just hope to do it and let's be pleased that people have prayed well. And many bishops might turn a blind eye if there isn't a hoo-ha on social media. But if people make a big deal on social media about it and start challenging the bishop, he might feel pressed to clamp down on it. So be very careful and prudent what, what you say about what you experience for the Triduum. Um, if like I said, the priests and the parish aren't already saying publicly we're doing the 55. Don't identify them or you might be bringing unnecessary pressure on their head. And the priests who do do it, many superiors or bishops would probably prefer to turn a blind eye to it than pick a fight. Um, and once you've priest has done this or faithful have experienced it, they never want to go back to the 62. And never mind the Novus Ordo. And here we have three papers from the uh, Univoce Federation. So all about the Holy Week reform or the liturgies or that Good Friday prayer for the Jews. So I can recommend all of those on this site. This site is, by the way, is from those um, Marian Friars Minor. And they're the ones who produced the Hebdomada Sancta book. So that's a, a great website, pre-955holyweek.com. There's also Divinium uh, Officium. So I think I've shown you this a few times here. You go and you pick Divino Aflatu and you'll get the pre-55 rites. If you go into Ordo, you can pick whichever month you want and then the day of the month. So if we go to Holy Thursday, for example, um, and then the Mass, here you see the texts in latin on the left and english on the right you can select different languages there's plenty of languages for translations and you will get the rights there um if we go back you can go up to holy saturday for example clicking forward a couple of days more um or i've gone the wrong way one two three four i don't think no I'm, i've got lost in that so what day is holy saturday this year um that's Good Friday, and here's the Easter Vigil. Um, so with the blessing of the fire, and then the 12 prophecies. Um, and you, you can also flick between the different versions. If you wanted to pick out the 1960 version, you get it here, and you'll see that much changes. Um, now, I'll go back and check out your questions. I wanted one other website, uh, Restore the 54. 
Uh, oh. So this is from the Australian Latin Mass Society. Um, and I think in their resources, they have some very good links. A lot of this ties in with the other websites we've looked at. Here you can get a PDF of the Father Lassant's Missal. Um, books for chant, I think. Was it Sarah was also asking about resources for cantors? So you'll have a lot here with the with the chant notation. Um, also in these, I'm beginning to hoard these. Uh, the Officio Maioris Hebdomine, the, the Office of the Great Week, or Holy Week, and th these have, you know, all all the chant for everything in them, but they're they're very hard to find. Um, and with priests like me hoarding them, it's it's even harder to find. But thanks be to God, Osius de Press and, and the friars are producing uh, brand new books with, with all this. And Corpus Christi Watershed also have a lot of links. And here you have all, also articles here about the pre-55. Um, so I, I, I recommend this site, Restore the 54. The documents changing Holy Week that were put out in 1951 for the Easter Vigil, provisionally uh, um, optional, but in 1955 they said starting next year, they published this after Easter, you have to do this reformed Holy Week. So that began in 1956. Holy Week was devastated. That's why people say pre-55 because it was in 56 that it changed. I think they're called Restore the 54 because it's very catchy. And also there were some Marian feasts which were changed in 1954, I believe, the last of a Marian feast. In 1950 was the dogma of the Assumption, but in 1954, I think they changed another. So there's also an auto on here. Um, this is quite useful for clerics. It will tell you the, the color of the vestments and what are the commemorations in the mass, um, whether or not you have folded chasubles, no glory, no creed, what the preface is, and also what you need to know for the divine office. So Restore the 54 under the Ordo is very useful for that. And you can download it onto your phone or computer for a, like a month in advance. Um, so before we can go back to this idea of the friendship song, I don't want to leave it on that page. We'll leave it on this. It's so beautiful. They, they have under, for the faithful, on this pre-55 Holy Week, lots and lots of PDFs for the different days of the week or for Tenebrae. You can download any of these if, if you're not going to buy one of those books. Um, they have an excerpt from the St. Andrew Missal there. Don Prosper Granger's Liturgical Year. This is can feed our meditations. I think Fortescue is on there as well. Now I'll pop back and see what questions we have. And we might end with a little analysis of that friendship song. Um, Right. W would your venial sins be forgiven if you come into a church and cross yourself? If you make the sign of the cross with uh, an unheard of love in your heart for the cross and for the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, for the Blessed Trinity, and you want and you love the crosses that you've been granted to carry in your life, such an act of love could forgive some all your venial sins. But it, I think it's unlikely. M much, much better at Holy Mass, the public liturgy, to follow that devoutly and consider it might be a partial uh, remitting of some of your venial sins, um, depending on your devotion, but that you want to do penance anyway as part of your daily life and especially uh, on in Lent as preparation for Easter and Advent. And if you're doing this, then with a healthy spiritual life and rhythm, then you, you can stay on top of that. And you'll notice as well if your venial sins are decreasing or increasing. If they're increasing, then there's something wrong with the spiritual life. 
if if they're decreasing, which means you're constantly discovering new ones, by the way, because when you actually overcome a certain, uh, your predominant sin, your worst sin, you overcome that, you'll find something else hiding behind it. And when you overcome that, you'll find something else. And actually, they, they're getting smaller and smaller, but as your soul is getting purer and purer, these flecks of, of dirt on it stand out worse and worse, and they scream at you as, as a blemish on something otherwise um, pleasing to God. So we, we never get to the end of it in this life. Um, but I, I, I think more, more than signing yourself with the cross with holy water, that's good, good to do. Um, but I wouldn't count it as sufficient. It just it adds on the right side of the, the balance. Uh, I don't know if you, I do have a couple of videos which refer to Melchizedek and a couple of my books, uh, especially I think Crucifixion to Creation, the middle book has something about Melchizedek. And I'm doing a sixth one about the Psalms of Sunday that will have bits about Melchizedek. But if, if you search, um, I don't know how to recommend which video, it, it, it's about Abraham Abel and Melchizedek because they're in the canon of the mass and they all offered these awesome um, sacrifices which put God in mind of the Father, the Son and the Spirit. Abraham's sacrifice of the Father, Abel's sacrifice reminds God of the Son and Abel's sacrifice puts God in mind of the Holy Spirit. Um, yes, in 1955, Pius XII changed the mass of the pre-sanctified a lot. Um, lots of pointless changes that just disguise the fact that it's very close to a holy mass. Um, so, so many changes. If you look that up on the new liturgical movement, we put up links last week or two weeks ago. Um, that lists a lot of these pointless changes. So it's incredible that Pius XII would have done this, especially he wrote in 1939, I think, about never changing the liturgy, never, uh, in, in this egregious, heavy-handed way. I mean, tiny changes might be made to the calendar or whatnot, but not what he did. Something happened to him between 1939 and, and 1958, was it, that he, he died? Um, and he, he, he lost that. I mean, obviously, he's at the end of his life, very old, and you have all these maniacs ambitious wanting to go up the curial ladder and run things themselves but but Pius the 12th signed off on it which which is incredible um so i'm looking through your questions do we have anything specific about any of the books which we've looked at or any of the websites with the online resources um they're all linked under the video or most of them um Yes, definitely. Contrition for every sin we've ever committed, mortal or venial, uh, if we can remember them, and just a general disposition of contrition because we realize that we sin without even knowing it. Um, we, we don't remember all our sins. So in your act of contrition at the end of confession, you can mention, just before you do, you, you ask for forgiveness and for all those sins you can't remember. Um, and, and with that mindset, with that disposition, God is very ready. Oh, you have a bronze trident. Is that for fitting three candles to? If you're anywhere near the north of England, I'd, be, I'd pay top price to hire it out. Um, otherwise, I'll have to make one again. Um, I believe that any priest can celebrate the pre-55. Now, it might take some convincing for him to do that, and even if he sees that he has the right to do that and his duty as a priest, he might think it's imprudent. He might be very scared of his bishop. He might have a maniac bishop. You know, a lot of priests are frightened of their bishops. That's the father-son relationship we have now in the hierarchy of the church. A lot of bishops are frightened of the pope, or if he's the pope, Bergoglio. I don't know if he's the pope or not, but it's a regime of fear and a regime of pleasing the tyrant so you can climb up the ladder. Um, and it's supposed to be the most um, filial paternal relationship after God the Father and Son. That's what the hierarchy of the church is supposed to be modeled on so it informs the world. So it, it would be a very savvy 
brave the awesome priest who realizes he can do this and who just does it and who is able to manage that situation well with this bishop I, I would unrealistically long for the day when you have 20 or 30 priests in the diocese doing this and then the bishop's going to be unable to close down or suspend 20 or 30 priests more realistically i think it's a question of this strategy um where after this stage two that we're working on now not to genuflect in the prayer for the jews not to cry out, crucify him if you're a novus order mass not to receive holy communion on good friday these were the points covered in a, a previous live stream then what i'll be working on uh towards the end of this year in preparation for a new catholic pope but who knows when we'll get one but it's to try and find some bishops and cardinals who are willing to prep themselves that when we have a new pope they will approach him maybe give him a letter that several of them have signed on saying please holy father would you make it clear to the whole church that no one can prevent priests from offering the pre-55 it's not even to force anybody to do it but it's to release it liberate it or not by an act of law just to declare that no one can obstruct it this is clear from quo primum in 1570 and then it will grow organically because we're not you don't want to rob novus order people of, of what they're clinging on to because if they're too scared to come tradition because there's been lots of lies said about tradition that they might be nervous of it so there's no need to rob them of what they have but allow people to do the pre-55 and it will spread and spread and spread at the pace that people want it at the pace that priests are ready to say it because it has to be done well it can't be done overnight it it takes considerable formation for the clergy and and adaptation for the faithful to get back onto solid food after this thin milk um and i don't think you need many cardinals to sign such a letter or bishops maybe even three cardinals and 10 bishops if they present it well to a newly elected pope he, he might take that on board and perhaps the institute of christ the king fraternity the sspx bon pasteur others they might also either combined with that letter or let the pope know we don't object to this or we would welcome this or they might even ask for it perhaps they would object some of them i don't know um but i think mo most of them would I know lots of priests and those that would definitely welcome this and definitely want it to happen. And then it just it takes one letter from the Pope and the pre-55 is free again. But it, we've got to fight for it in the meantime. Everyone who can say it should do it with a mind to not causing needless strife in their parish or a needless um, fight with their bishop. But sometimes you can't avoid the fight, right? We, we, we do what's right. And whatever price you pay for that, well, that's in God's hands, um, and he'll carry us through. Uh, and we'll be ready for the long term. might take another 12 years for this. might take longer. But the world, you are not going to see an end to the genocide and the annihilation that's going on and the globalist project until the church is doing what she's meant to do. Otherwise, there's no chance for the world to get, get its life in order. Um, so I'm coming towards the end of the questions I think um, yeah you, you, you don't repeat sins that you've already had ab absolved that's quite correct that comment it, it is a kind of it could be scrupulosity doing that um, and this is the wonderful insight we want everyone to have in Holy Week. My sins crucified Jesus. Lord, have mercy. And if you acknowledge that your sins crucified him and you ask for mercy, you will receive mercy. And feeling that in Holy Week more deeply, it lasts with you through the year because the Holy Week is basically training for every single Sunday Mass. And every single Sunday Mass is training for daily Mass, whether you can get to it or not. Because the Mass is, as the canon of the Mass says, and as the offertory prayers say, it's the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord. It's these mysteries becoming present. And we, we do that in Holy Week in a very full way so that we know what we're doing every single Sunday. And every Sunday, so no, we know what we're doing every day. 
And then every day, every week, every year becomes a preparation for our life, the whole span of our life, because at the end of it, we're going to die. And we want to r rise uh, with Christ af after our death by having practiced all our life. So those of you who are saying I'm 65, 68, and just now learning the faith, it's a, it's a gift from God. He, he's calling you before the end, showing you this stuff. Um, and he calls us all at different times. I was away from the church for many, many years. I came late to, to seminary, um, while others are called much younger. Some never fall away from the faith. God knows exactly what we need to for him to bring us in optimally. Um, Yes, we should pray, uh, confess sins of omission. Um, for, for example, a lack of gratitude, I, I think is very widespread. We, we lack a due gratitude to God. It might be for some that they're lacking in the corporal or spiritual works of mercy. Uh, we, we shouldn't forget these. Um, it's, not all, it's not easy to visit the imprisoned, to be honest. That is a um, corporal work of mercy. But it's very difficult to do now. A lot of prisons, you, you need to go through a lot of a process to have access to the prisoners. Easier to write to them um, or to donate to a charity, for example, that looks after prisoners in some of the worst prisons in the world. You have to do a bit of research to get the right one. And certainly to pray for them. Um, or, or to visit the families of prisoners. You could search for an organization that has a system for that because often the, the families need support if they have one of the parents in prison. Um, but yet confessing sins of omission is, is important. You can think of sins of thought, word and deed and omission as a, as a schema for ex examination of conscience. Um, Um, sorry, this is. I'm just looking for questions about those resources for Holy Week. I hope if you don't have a book specifically for Holy Week or you don't already have a missile with the pre 55, do you get one of them? Um, And they're, they're constantly improving, I think, year to year. The one from the Franciscans came out, I think, three or four years ago. Uh, the one from Osiusti just came out this year. Um, and it's a healthy competition to push them on for better and better versions. And having the chant online, that there are certain chants from the faithful, which um, you can practice. Uh, the, the, the link is under this video, I'm quite sure it is, maybe the moderator can post the link in the chat for the Good Friday prayer cards, and it will take you to a Google Drive page with like a dozen different versions of the cards. You can pick different size or different artwork on the front, uh, slightly different designs on some of them for the prayer and the translation. Um, but it's definitely under there as link for the Good Friday prayer cards. If anyone else can find it, maybe post the link in the chat. Or if I haven't done it, I'll post it in the comments <clears throat> after. Um, right, so we have this internal cry, my sins crucified him. But we don't articulate that shouting it out during the reading of the Passion as they do at the Novus Ordo. Which, remember that I showed you that picture from the Divine Will writings where they're saying that God the Father said crucify him and Our Lady said crucify him. This is blasphemous. Um, and then it goes on to say, not only those who were present, but all the absent and all generations, past and future. So everyone's guilty of this point, saying, crucify him, we want him dead. Now, in a sense, our sins declare that. Um, but having realized that our sins declare that, we, we want to repent that. We never want to repeat it. And certainly not in a premeditated, organized way, like in the liturgy, which should be pure worship of God of a compunction of heart, a contrition, that the sins in our daily life declare that terrible reality. So, but even if there's a sense in which all of us are guilty of that, not the Blessed Mother and not God the Father. Um, 
So I don't know how any Catholic can read past that in the divine will writings and not put them smartly down and get rid of them. Um, <clears throat> I believe the CMRI is all pre-55, so they don't do the changes which Pius the Twelfth introduced for Holy Week. Um, I might I might be wrong, but I think that's the case. Um, What I will do after, I, I won't do any live stream or video next week because we've all got much better things to do than YouTube. Um, but about a week after Easter, at the end of low week, we could perhaps report back on people's experiences of the Triduum and Good Friday, what happened. If, if join the prayer for the Jews, if you don't genuflect, you remain standing. That's excellent. But don't look around the church to see who else is not genuflecting. Just keep keep your eyes forward, may even a little bit lowered. You might notice whether, of course, the priest genuflects or not for the prayer for the Jews. That would be interesting to know if, um, if a deacon sings it out or not. If it's a solemn mass, the priest shouldn't genuflect for any of those prayers. Um, but the deacon and subdeacon will, except we hope not for the prayer for the Jews. D don't look around the church, but if you notice in your corner of your eye, two or three others are not genuflecting, that would be good to know. And please, God, as the years go on, there'll be less and less people genuflecting for that. If you happen to be at a Novus Ordo, you could let us know if people enthusiastically cried out, crucify him. Were there, were there any kind of usher or people encouraging people to do that before the ceremony, explaining that you have to do that? Please, God, no. Uh, we, we want that to die out so people, everyone falls silent at that point. And then the, the priests will really realize um, that this is a terrible thing to cry out. So we, a week after Easter, we, we can report back on what people experienced, and then going forward, it's a combining stage two and three of this strategy. Um, you, uh, like when you visit a prisoners, it, it makes a big deal. It's a really big deal for the prisoners because if, if they if they got no visitors, um, it's very hard to hold it together, and it's a bit awkward maybe visiting at first um don't know what to talk about but you you'll pick it up and you get experience you obviously you're not going to say what did you do the prisoners will tell that if they want and don't ask him what's it like in there just too vague a question um but go and listen and see what you, what you can bring um or else like i said that the, the families is perhaps easier to visit them now, um, am I catching up with the bottom of the list? I think I am. So this looks... Is that the Father Ferdinand Cabral, rather than Carol? Uh, I might be wrong. Um, I think that's one we, we pulled up earlier. If it's... Well, I'll look, I'll look that up. Um, and report back in the future unless non nobis you want to confirm for us was that um this this version which is ag excellent um Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm aware that as a priest, people are confused. Sometimes they think I'm talking about politics, whereas really there's a political level, which is not the proper domain for a priest, and there's a spiritual level, which is absolutely a proper domain. And priests and bishops are too afraid to say the Jews need to convert to Jesus Christ. And they're afraid to say that, and that's why things are falling apart on the political level. Um, and when the bishops give the impression that the church is anti-Semitic, as in that note that's going to go out on Good Friday, then we're absolutely playing into the false narrative. I, I don't know if I should... Tell, let me know in the comments if I should play any more of that friendship song where you have the Israeli children singing. They've been totally brainwashed. They take Israeli teenagers to Poland and show them Auschwitz, and you have Mossad agents there telling the kids... 
be careful, be careful. The people here still hate you. They still want to bomb you. So be ready to, to take cover or come back to, to our base if, if there's difficulties. And so you can imagine that the Israelis are growing up thinking, wow, everybody wants to kill us. They want to destroy our, our country. And they never hear the true history of Israel, that it's an illegal state and they've stolen all this land off the Palestinians. Um, so that's why they're so hyper sensitive to, to any attack and, and why so many people in the West are afraid to criticize them for what they're doing now. It's different, I think, with our governments. They're just bought off um, th through the banks which have behind them Kabbalah um, and some very dark, dark agents who know exactly what they're doing to try to completely take power in the world by sucking the life out of us, enslaving us through mortgages, basically, debt um, and pointless work and noise everywhere. Wherever you go, there's noise because they don't want you to think and be still and hear the voice of God. They don't want you to have the time to do your own research and work out life actually is simple. The, the Catholic life is simple. The spiritual life we have is not that hard, but you need silence to realize what it is and to do it. And then everything is in your hands, everything. And we don't need to fear these people, however powerful they think they are. God will reduce them. Um, okay, I'm, I thought I was at the bottom. I am at the bottom of the questions. So um, I don't know about presenting my view on that. But I think it's a lot simpler if we simply say Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We do it his way or we, everything falls apart. And that of all the false religions, it's Judaism which actually approves the crucifixion or refuses to say that it was a bad thing. Even Islam has tries to deny that Jesus was crucified because they think that's too much of a shame for, they say Jesus is a prophet and they can't imagine a prophet suffering that much. So they try and say it was somebody else that was on the cross or Jesus didn't actually die on the cross. It was an illusion that Allah allowed people to think that he died on the cross. But Judaism approves the people who did it and, and, and declares that they are the spiritual descendants of those who called for it. Um, and given that's the case and that Jesus is the son of God who has the only way to bring the world into order, then to oppose him is what brings disorder into the world. And this is a spiritual matter. And if the church isn't preaching that, we see the political consequences everywhere. Pope St. Pastor XII met with Theodor Herzl, I think in 1907, and said, we cannot support Zionism, never. This land has been sanctified by the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can't prevent you taking it perhaps through through all your wiles. But if you do, we'll be there waiting to baptize you and our churches will be ready to receive you. That is the proper attitude of the church. Never can support Zionism, but we're always ready to baptize and receive Jews into the church. And we're not gonna get into a political fight over it, still less into a physical fight. I mean, if they find a way to take that land, they take it. But if the church were clear, that we can't support it, that the true Israel is the church, true Jerusalem is the heavenly Jerusalem, then a lot of the political support for Zionism would dry up and they wouldn't be able to achieve any of that if America, Britain and France, among others, weren't supporting it. And if Germany hadn't been beaten down so much that it didn't raise its voice even to criticize the annihilation of the Palestinians. Um, and so I'll wrap up, I'll wrap up. Oh, do, do, tell me in the comments. Do you want me to play that friendship friendship song? Um, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see anything to play it. Um, this is is terrible. Well, I'll I'll go out on that note. I'll I'll play it and then end the live stream after. Um, my point is, if we are not praying on Good Friday for the conversion of the Jews, if we don't understand that's necessary by the grace of God then this is what's going to be happening everywhere. But God bless you all. And tomorrow, Palm Sunday, Holy Week begins. It, it will form your soul like nothing else and set you up for all your life and for eternal life. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing a no for the friendship song. Um, I, w I won't play it, yeah, because I don't want to finish on that note. But I, I might p put the link in the comments. I'll pin a comment with the link if anybody 
wants to see it. But thank you all for joining and um, blessed Holy Week.